Lying in the lawn, staring up at the stars is Hazel Elegance Lancaster, a young woman in high school. She states that she acknowledges that we are free to choose how to tell sad situations, and that even while one might ignore it and claim that everything can be cheered up with a Peter Gabriel song that is not the way things actually are. Hazel is seen frequently carrying an oxygen tank with a cannula in her nose so she can relax. She has stage 4 thyroid cancerous tumor. Her parents, Michael and Maria, her PCP, order her to attend a disease support group at a church called the Exacting Heart of Jesus. The man in charge of it is a man by the name of Patrick. He had a cancerous growth on his testicles and is now divorced from his parents, but he is optimistic about life. Franny thinks Hazel ought to have friends, but as Hazel points out, having a child who gnaws it due to cancerous growth is far more regrettable than gnawing it from illness. Augustus Waters and Hazel meet on a field trip. Isaac's pal Gus experiences the same dread of forgetting and osteosarcoma remission. Hazel advises him to put this fear aside. Gus and Hazel talk about their relationship and their incestuous actions. Gus tells Hazel that they have always loved one another and extends an invitation to see a movie. To make sure it doesn't give him power, he apologizes for putting a cigarette in his mouth. Hazel tells Gus about her experience with cancer and her flashbacks. After receiving treatment and a diagnosis at the age of 13, she finally experienced remarkable relief. When Hazel visits his house, Gus begs her to tell him her true story rather than the one about her cancer. Hazel suggests counterinsurgents and an imperial affliction, but she claims it isn't a cancer story. Hazel waits for Gus to contact her after finishing An Imperial Affliction and is surprised to discover that the book ends mid-sentence, with Anna dying during her narration. Hazel phones Gus, who informs her that Monica ended her relationship with Isaac before to his operation. Gus says Isaac is experiencing a psychotic episode, while Hazel thinks his reaction is natural. Gus discusses the book's finale with Hazel, and she writes emails to the author inquiring about Anna's mother's fate, her relationship with the Dutch Tulip Man, and Anna's pet hamster Sisyphus. When Hazel discovers that an imperial affliction concludes with Anna's death, Gus reminds her that Monica broke up with Isaac before surgery. Hazel talks to Gus about Anna's fate, her friendship with the Dutch Tulip Man, and Sisyphus in letters. Gus advises asking the genies for a wish after Hazel discusses the invitation with him. Hazel has already made use of her Disney World dream. When Gus brings flowers to Hazel's house, he invites her to a park that has a playground made of skeletons. Making light of his virginity, Gus persuades the genies to fulfill Hazel's wish to visit Amsterdam. Gus receives an invitation from Hazel and advises making a wish with the genies. Hazel's ambition to visit Disney World has already come true. Hazel wakes up with fluid in her lungs, making breathing difficult. After her parents rush her to the hospital, the medical staff decides she is not well enough to fly. Hazel remembers her time in the intensive care unit as a youngster, when Franny told her to let go. Hazel, feeling sad, overlooks Gus calls and texts. She sits on a swing in her lawn, contrasting herself with a projectile. Gus guarantees her that distance doesn't decrease his fondness. Hazel chooses to remain companions. Afterward, they intend to head out to Amsterdam together. Hazel calls her mom and texts Gus, who affirms their arrangements. She encourages them to remain together for essentially seven days. Gus appears in a limo to get Hazel and Franny, articulating he wants to go in style. On the plane, Gus becomes uncertain as he's rarely flown on a plane, and he becomes invigorated once they take off. Exactly when Hazel gives Gus a kiss on the cheek, Franny imagines that they are enchanting. The following day, Hazel and Gus go to meet Van Houten. They are welcomed at the entryway by Lidwich, who invites them inside. There is unopened fan mail all around the floor. Two or three tracks down Van Houten in his nightgown, drinking scotch. They plunk down so Van Houten can address their inquiries, yet he rather arranges Lidwich to put on Swedish rap. Regardless of the noisy rap, Hazel begins to pose her inquiries, for example, the destiny of Anna's mom and the Dutch tulip man. However Van Houten just answers with philosophical rubbish. Gus inquires as to whether he is meddling with them, and Van Houten offers a discourteous remark about Gus' malignant growth. He just deteriorates by declining to respond to Hazel's inquiries and offending her and Gus' afflictions. Hazel and Gus storm out. Van Houten asks her for what reason she harps on these inquiries, 
and Hazel simply advises him to go screw himself. Lightwitch accompanies Hazel and Gus to the Encanded House, where they share their most memorable kiss and have intercourse interestingly. They leave with a drawing of the Virgin Circle and 18-year-old young men with one leg outside. On their last day in Amsterdam, Hazel and Gus eat with Franny prior to strolling alone together. They sit on a seat and Gus tells Hazel that when she was in the ICU, he felt a torment in his hip and got a pet output. Hazel definitely understands everything that he will say to her. Gus says the output, illuminated like a Christmas tree, and the disease returned and spread through his body. Hazel puts her head on his shoulder and cries. Gus attempts to ease up the temperament by proposing they make out. Hazel, Gus, and Franny return to Indianapolis with Michael getting them. A couple of days after the fact, Hazel and Gus spend time with Isaac, who is presently totally visually impaired and lets them know that Monica hasn't addressed him since the separation. To encourage him, Hazel and Gus purchase eggs, and they go to Monica's home and allowed Isaac to pelt her vehicle with eggs. Gus calls Hazel around midnight to request that she come to the service station to help him. She heads around there to find him sitting in his vehicle, shrouded in his own bodily fluid and regurgitation, with a disease in his midsection from the G-tube, needing to buy another bunch of cigarettes, since he can't track down his old pack. Hazel calls an emergency vehicle, regardless of Gus requests not to. The rescue vehicle shows up and takes Gus to the medical clinic. Gus goes through greater therapy for the malignant growth until the specialists choose to take him off the chemo. Hazel is presently the one being denied in his clinic chamber, since she is no relative. He currently requires a wheelchair to get around. Hazel takes him to the recreation area with the Crazy Bones reproduction for a cookout. He communicates his craving to an affect the world before he bites the dust and his need to carry on with a phenomenal life. Hazel dislikes it and lets him know that he doesn't have to do all that since she and his folks love him and that this ought to be sufficient. He says he's grieved and they drink champagne. Gus calls Hazel one more night to welcome her to the exacting heart of Jesus for a social event and to bring a tribute that he requested that Hazel compose for him. She begins to leave however is come by her folks who are setting up supper. Hazel contends with them that she will be gone and that they will be separated from everyone else subsequent to hearing her mom say she won't be a mother any longer after Hazel kicks the bucket. Franny is surprised Hazel recollects that and makes sense of that she presently realizes she was off base and will continuously be Hazel's mom regardless of whether she kicks the bucket. Both her folks say they will love constantly her regardless and that Franny is taking classes to turn into a social specialist and help families that go through a comparative interaction that they are going through. Hazel is glad to hear this and doesn't need to stress over her folks assuming that she kicks the bucket. Her folks will be satisfied even after she is no more. Hazel joins Gus and Isaac at the congregation for what is a pre-burial service that Gus needs to observe since he needs to go to his own memorial service. Isaac gets going a commendation with a dash of humor, however says that assuming he at any point is given robot eyes, he would deny them since he would rather not see a world without Gus. Hazel goes up and begins to discuss her romantic tale with Gus prior to changing to math and that there are boundless numbers somewhere in the range of 0 and 1, that there are endless vast qualities, and that she is appreciative for their limitlessness. The two of them say, I love you to one another one final time. Gus bites the dust eight days after the fact. The Lancasters get a call around midnight to hear the news. Hazel's folks stroll into her room, and without a word, she realizes what's going on and starts to cry. She reviews while going through treatment and the medical caretaker requested that she rate her aggravation on a scale from 1 to 10. Hazel said 9, and the medical caretaker said she was a contender for calling a 10 a 9. She says that she was not being daring at that point, however saving her 10 for this kind of agonizing event. A funeral is held for Gus. Hazel and her parents go, and as the preacher speaks, Hazel is surprised to see Van Houten there. Hazel is called up to speak, corrects the preacher that she is Gus's girlfriend, puts a pack of cigarettes between the flowers on his coffin and gives a new eulogy that she finds more fitting for the public at the funeral. After the funeral, Hazel decides to drive home alone, and Van Houten enters her car. There, she learns that he and Gus kept in touch prior to his death, and Gus told Van Houten that he could redeem himself by visiting Hazel and answering her questions. He reveals that Anna was based on Van Houten. Houghton's eight-year-old daughter who died of leukemia. Before she furiously sends him out of her car, Van Houghton gives Hazel a letter, which she crumples up and throws away. She drives away and sees him drink from his flask in the car's mirror. Hazel's dad goes to comfort her following Gus's death. Later, 
Isaac comes over to visit. He tells Hazel that Gus really loved her and never stopped talking about her to the point where it got annoying. He asks her if she read the letter from Van Houten, which happened to be written by Gus. She realizes that the crumpled letter she threw away in the car is from Gus and not from Peter Van Houten. The letter is a eulogy for Hazel written by Gus. We hear Gus's voice reading it, saying that he snuck into Hazel's room in the ICU while she slept, holding her hand, and how he thought about them together. He expresses his admiration for her beauty and personality, and adds that people can choose who hurt them. Gus liked his choice, and he hoped Hazel liked hers. He ends the letter with, okay, Hazel Grace. The film ends with Hazel still lying in the grass and looking up at the stars, replying, okay. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications, so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.